If you can take your Bible, go to 2 Chronicles, chapter 27. 2 Chronicles, chapter 27. Once you find your place there, flip over to uh, 2 Kings, chapter 15 also. Uh, we'll be going to be flipping back and forth here a little bit as we get into the message. And uh, instead of trying to find it, uh, you know, just put a finger in both and, uh, you know, we'll kind of flip back and forth. But first we're going to be in 2 Chronicles chapter 27. If you guys are there. 2 Chronicles chapter 27 and verse number 1 it says, Jotham was 20 and 5 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord according to all that his father Uzziah did. Howbeit he entered not into the temple of the Lord, and the people did yet corruptly. But he built the high gate of the house of the Lord, and on the wall of Ophel he built much. Moreover, he built cities in the mountains of Judah, and in the forest he built castles and towers. He fought also with the king of the Ammonites, and prevailed against them. And the children of Ammon gave him the same year an hundred talents of silver, and ten thousand measures of wheat, and ten thousand of barley. So much did the children of Ammon pay unto him, both the second year and the third. So Jotham became mighty, because he prepared his ways before the Lord his God. Now the rest of the acts of Jotham, and all his wars, and his ways, lo, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. He was five and twenty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. And Jotham slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. And Ahaz his son reigned in his stead. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for getting us all here safe today. We pray that you be uh, with each and every one of us and give us a blessing. Uh, we know that it's uh, important for us to come to church no matter what obstacles that uh, uh, may be before us. So we are thankful, Lord, that you got us all here safely. We also pray that you be with the ones that uh, cannot be here today uh, because of sickness or weather or uh, uh, whatever it may be. Uh, we just pray that you be with us as we go through this service, Lord, and we pray that your name is exalted. And uh, we pray that you know that we're here because we love you and no other reason but to serve you and to worship you and to praise your holy name. So I pray that you be with each and every one of us. I pray that you be with me in my preaching. I pray that you be with all of us in hearing your word, that we're able to take it in and uh, learn from it and apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Chapter number 27 here in uh, 2 Chronicles is the shortest chapter in 2 Chronicles. Uh, there's a lot of chapters in 2 Chronicles, but this is the shortest. And it's just the simple story of uh, Jotham. Uh, Jotham is about the 11th king of the southern kingdom. We know that the kingdoms, uh, uh, the 12 tribes of Israel were broken up, and we have the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, and he is, I believe, the 11th uh, king. And this is a, a short little story. You know, we don't have a lot of information about Jotham, like all the other good kings of Judah, here in 2 Chronicles. But here in verse number 7, it says, Now the rest of the acts of Jotham, and all his wars, and his ways, lo, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. That's in 2 Kings chapter 15. And if you're there, just flip over there. And in verse number 32 it says, 
In the second year of Pekah, the son of Remaliah, king of Israel, began Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, to reign. Five and twenty years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. He did according to all that his father Uzziah had done. Howbeit the high places were not removed. The people sacrificed and burnt incense still in the high places. He built the higher gate of the house of the Lord. Now the rest of the acts of Jotham and all he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? In those days the Lord began to send against Judah, Rezin the king of Syria, and Pekah the son of Remaliah. And Jotham slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, his father. And Ahaz his son reigned in his stead. Now, if we read that, that gives us less information than in 2 Chronicles. In 2 Chronicles, we get nine verses dedicated totally to Jotham. But over here in 2 Kings, that's only seven verses that we just read. And that's about, you know, the, the reign of King Jotham. The fact is, sometimes saying less is saying more. Sometimes saying less is saying more. What I mean by that is, you know, life is simple. It's not always easy, but it is always simple. Just do the right thing. You know, life is simple when you just do the right thing. And there's always a choice. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, the Bible reads, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. You know, that means your children. You know, life is simple. Just, just do the right thing. Make good choices. You know, now listen to this. The things that we do, we do them because we choose to do them. And also the things that we don't do, we don't do because we chose not to do them. That's pretty simple. You know, life is easy. Just do the right thing. Choosing not to do what's right is just as bad as choosing to do what's wrong. When you choose not to do right, then that's just as bad as, as doing something wrong. Uh, it doesn't get more simpler than that. In James chapter 4, verse 17, it says... Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. You know, when we know to do good and we don't do it, it's just as if we did something wrong. It's sin. It's all sin. In Luke chapter 12, verse 47, it says, this is Jesus speaking, And that servant, which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. Jesus is saying the same thing there. If you know what to do, the right thing to do, and you don't do it, that servant shall be beaten with many stripes. That means you're going to get punished for not doing the things that you should be doing. If you would, look down at verse number 6 in 2 Chronicles chapter 27. Verse number 6, it says, So Jotham became mighty because he prepared his ways before the Lord his God. Remember back in Luke 12, 47, it says, And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. What does it mean to prepare your ways? It said that Jotham prepared his ways. It is cause and effect. Cause and effect. If we make this choice, it's going to affect uh, what the outcome is, maybe right now, maybe later on. Uh, typically, it's always later on, as we'll find out when we read here. It's cause and effect. In Proverbs chapter 22, verse 3, it says, A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple passed on and are punished. The prudent man foreseeth the evil. When we make our decisions, whether good, uh, to do good or not to do evil, uh, you know, we make those decisions 
based on what the outcome is going to be. Sometimes we can see that outcome right in front of us. Uh, you know, if I step out into that street while well, that truck is coming, I'm going to get ran over. You know, sometimes we see, uh, you know, the evil coming upon us afar off. And not everybody can see that. You know, sometimes we make decisions right here and now that we know is going to affect us later on in, down in our lives. Or uh, the people we love, their lives. Uh, like it says in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. You know, we're going to learn what happens, you know, to Jotham's family later on in this story. But the choices we make today can affect our future. The things that we do and the things that we choose not to do. There's very few people in the Bible where there's nothing bad said about them. You know, the first one that comes to mind is Joseph. You know, as we read the book of Joseph, you know, going into the land of Egypt, there's nothing said bad about Joseph. You know, he, he carried God in his heart his whole life. And as God led him, you know, a lot of things, bad things happened to Joseph, but nothing bad was ever said of Joseph. The Church of Philadelphia in Revelation. You know, uh, God had something to say about every single church uh, negative. But this thing I have against thee. Except for the Church of Philadelphia, one out of seven. He didn't have anything bad to say about Philadelphia. Everything that they was doing was right. That's just one out of seven. The same thing with Jotham here. There's nothing bad said about Joseph. Sometimes saying less is saying more. All these kings that went before Jotham were good kings. But there was always something bad at the end. Uh, which happened to all the good kings of Israel except for Jotham. Sometimes saying less is saying more because there's nothing bad said about Jotham. Let's study a little bit more about Jotham. If you would, look here in verse number 2. 2 Chronicles chapter 27 and verse number 2. It says, And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Uzziah did. Howbeit he entered not into the temple of the Lord. It says he entered not into the temple. Uh, you know, if we don't know our Bible, we don't really know what that means. But if we know our Bible and we've read this uh, in order, we know that uh, he didn't do what Uzziah, his father, did. If you would, look over at 2 Chronicles chapter 26, just the previous chapter. For me and my Bible, it's on the same page, so I don't have to turn. But in verse number 16, it says, But when he was strong, talking about Uzziah, Jotham's father, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he transgressed against the Lord his God, and went into the temple of the Lord, to burn incense upon the altar of incense. And Amorat, as Azariah the priest, went in after him, and with him fourscore priests of the Lord that were valiant men. And they withstood Uzziah the king, and said unto him, It appertaineth not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense unto the Lord, but unto the priest, the sons of Aaron, that are consecrated to burn incense, Go out of the sanctuary, for thou hast trespassed. Neither shall it be for thine honor from the Lord God. Then Uzziah was wroth and had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was wroth with the priest, the leprosy even rose up in his forehead before the priest in the house of the Lord from beside the incense altar. And Azariah the chief priest and all the priests looked upon him, and behold... He was leprous in his forehead, and they thrust him out from thence. Yea, himself hasted also to go out, because the Lord had smitten him. And Uzziah the king was a leper unto the day of his death, and dwelt in a several house, being a leper. For he was cut off from the house of the Lord. And Jotham his son was over the king's house, judging the people of the land. Jotham 
stepped up to the plate and did what had to be done. You know, his father, Uzziah, transgressed against the Lord, and he was doing something that uh, God forbid. You know, it was for the priest to do those things, uh, not the king. Uh, you know, so the Lord struck him with leprosy and put him in his place. And there was nobody there to rule the people, nobody there to do what had to be done. But Jotham stepped up and did what had to be done. You know, that was the decision that he made. Most people wouldn't do that today. You know, when uh, somebody is in charge or somebody's doing the work that has to be done and something happens to them and they fall out of the way or whatever the case may be, most people won't step up to the plate and do what needs to be done and make decisions. It said that Jotham, his son, was over the king's house judging the people. Most people are not willing to step up and make those judgments when the leader... Or, or the person in charge is not there to make those decisions. Somebody has to step up. Most people don't. Most people just let people do whatever. Or most people just do whatever is easiest. They don't make the decisions. And when you're doing that, the things that you don't do will affect your future outcome. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Most people won't step up and do the things, the judgments, the decisions that need uh, to be done. Most people will not accept the responsibility of making right judgments uh, when they're up to the bat or when they should step up to the bat, step up to the plate. Not knowing or caring about the destruction that it leads to. You know, people are not willing to step up and say, hey, you know, this is going to affect your future outcome. Don't do it. Do this instead. This is what's right, and this is what's wrong. Most people won't do that. Just, just let them do whatever, because I'm not going to step up to the plate uh, and make the decisions uh, and be the one to tell you what to do. Most people won't do that. They just don't care. They either don't know or they don't care about the destruction that it leads to. In 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 16, it says, And Isaiah said unto Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord. We all know Isaiah is a, is a great prophet of God. And he says, hear the word of the Lord. When he says that, that means that's what God is saying. It says, behold, the days come that all that is in thine house and that which thy fathers have laid up in store unto this day shall be carried into Babylon. Nothing shall be left, saith the Lord. And of thy sons that shall issue from thee, which thou shalt beget, they shall take away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Then Hezekiah, I'm sorry, then said Hezekiah unto Isaiah, Good is the word of the Lord which thou hast spoken. And he said, Is it not good if peace and truth be in my days? What is King Hezekiah saying here? He doesn't care about his decisions that affect the future. All he cares about is him and his time. He says, is it not good if peace and truth be in my days? He only cares about himself. As long as everything is good for me right now, nuts to everybody else. You know, that's evil and wickedness. If people are not willing to step up and make good decisions and accept responsibility, you know, what they're saying is nuts to everybody else. I don't care what happens in the future. I only care about what happens to me right here and now. So we have to make good decisions, whether good or bad, to affect the outcome of the future, especially to our family and the ones that we love. You know, Hezekiah could care less. His sons are going to be eunuchs. We all know what that means. Chop, chop. Uh, so they can be servant in the king's house and, and obey the king of Babylon, you know, which is, you know, a wickedness. No, Jotham stepped up to the plate because he cared. When his father was sent in a several house and was not able to, to make the judgments, Jotham stepped up to the plate because he cared. He cared about the future of Israel. He cared about his sons and daughters. He cared about everyone in his family, the whole family of God, the whole family of Israel. You know, a winner always wants the ball. That's not in the Bible, but that's a great saying. A winner always wants the ball. He always wants to make those good decisions and do the things that are right. Because he knows if he has the ball, he can uh, 
uh, control uh, what's going to happen in the future. Uh, cause and effect. A winner always wants the ball. A loser always wants to pass the ball. Get it away from me. I'm not able to, to make these decisions, but a winner always wants the ball. Now you might think, reading here in chapter 27, things didn't work out for Jotham all that well. If you would look at verse number 1, it says, Jotham was 20 and 5 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. Now flip down to verses 7 and 8, it says, now the rest of the acts of Jotham and all his wars and his ways, lo, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. He was five and twenty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. Now I'm no mathematician, but that's pretty simple math there. Twenty-five and sixteen, he lived forty-one years. We say, well, that's not very long. You know, a lot of these kings lived uh, to be a hundred or over a hundred uh, he only lived 41 years. That doesn't sound very good. But if you would, flip back to 2 Kings chapter 15. In Isaiah chapter 57 verse 1 it says, The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart. And merciful men are taken away. None considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. See, Jotham only lived... 41 years. But if you're there in 2 Kings chapter 15, if you would look down at verse number 37, it says, In those days the Lord began to send against Judah, Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Remaliah. And Jotham slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, his father, and Ahaz, his son, reigned in his stead. You notice how those two verses? It says, God is sending them trouble. And then Jotham slept with his fathers. If we would go back to 2 Chronicles 27. There was good kings and there was bad ones. And there's a long line of good kings leading up to Jotham. You know, his father and his grandfather and his great-grandfather. But it says that God was sending them trouble. You know why? We have all these good kings in a row, but God is sending them trouble. You know, why is that? It's kind of weird if we think about that. All these good kings. If you would, look at verse number 2. In uh, 2 Chronicles 27, it says, And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Uzziah did. <clears throat> Excuse me. Howbeit he entered not into the temple of the Lord. That was the right thing to do. But then look what it says. And the people did yet corruptly. The people did yet corruptly. You might say he wasn't a good leader. You know, the people did yet corruptly. He did all these good things, and there's nothing bad said about Jotham. So you might say, well, maybe he wasn't a good leader. He was a great leader. Uh, sometimes less is more. And the people that lived in that time period had also great prophets, great preachers at that time. He was a great leader and they had great prophets. In Isaiah chapter 1 verse 1 it says, The vision of Isaiah the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. In Hosea chapter 1 verse 1 it says, The word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Beri, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and then the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. Also in Micah chapter 1 verse 1 it says, The word of the Lord that came to Micah, the Morashathite, in the days of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, which he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. You know, he had all these great prophets. And he also was a good king. You know, so he was, he was a great leader. And the people had all these great prophets. But it says, and the people did yet corruptly. I'll tell you why 
he was a great leader. If you would look at verses 2 and 3 again. It says, And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Uzziah did. Howbeit he entered not into the temple of the Lord, and the people did yet corruptly. He built the high gate of the house of the Lord, and on the wall of Ophel he built much. Now if you would look at verse number 7, it says, Now the rest of the acts of Jotham and all his wars... In his ways, lo, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. You know, the Bible is telling us that we can look back to kings and find out what his ways were. If you would, you go back to 2 Kings. Hopefully you kept your place there. In chapter 15, we're going to be in verse 35. In verse number 35, it says, Howbeit the high places were not removed... The people sacrificed and burned incense still in the high places. He built the higher gate of the house of the Lord. The only thing it says in the book of the Kings about Jotham and what he did, like it told us back in 2 Chronicles, is that he built the higher gate of the house of the Lord. That's the only thing it leads us to to read. Uh, when we're reading 2 Chronicles about Jotham, it says you can turn back to the uh, 2 Kings chapter 15 and find out Jotham, uh, what Jotham did. And the only thing it says, besides you know, him living and doing what God wanted and dying, uh, is that he built the higher gate of the house of the Lord. What that means is he set the high standard. He put the standard high to enter into the house of the Lord. Because he built the high gate. Our standards as Christians has to be higher than the rest of the world. You know, Jotham built the high gate. According to the Bible, that's the only thing he did in 2 Kings chapter 15. He built the high gate, the higher gate of the house of the Lord. We need to have our standards high. That means to make good decisions. Uh, Good decisions on what we do and what we shouldn't do. God has given us free will. That means we have a choice. If you would look at verse number 35 again, it says, that's in 2 Kings, Howbeit the high places were not removed. The people sacrificed and burned incense still in the high places. He built the higher gate of the house of the Lord. It says that the high places were not taken away. But it says that he built the higher gate. You know, Satan always copies God. Anything he do is going to be uh, trying to copy God. That's why it says all the high places. You think you're going to the high place, but you're not. You're not going to the higher gate of the house of the Lord. What are the high places? You know, the world. There's a lot of higher places, a lot of high places that people sacrifice to in the world. Sports teams, uh, money, uh, themselves, their pride. You know, those are the, all the high places that people sacrifice to. Other churches. You know, I'll probably pass 30 or 40 churches coming to this church. And I'm passing them up gladly. You know, because those are all the high places of the world. I want to go to that higher place. The higher gate of the house of God. I want to set my standards above the rest of the world. You know, I can see another church from my house and it's a Baptist church. And I've never once set... Uh, a foot in it because I know it's a Southern Baptist church. My standards are high. You know, you go into these Baptist churches and the preacher's standing up there in a a t-shirt or a, uh, you know, some kind of pink or purple shirt to let everybody know that he's uh, friendly to everybody. Uh, You know, there ain't no pulpit. You know, he's just standing up there on a stool or something so he can be everybody's friend. I've never known one prophet in the Bible who was everybody's friend. The Bible says that all who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall shall suffer persecution. I've never met one prophet that the whole world liked. You know, uh, most of them were cast into prison. As we read in Hebrews, uh, you know, they was killed and lived in caves. And, uh, you know, the people didn't like them. Uh, John the Baptist lived in the wilderness. He couldn't live with the rest of the people because they hated him because he preached righteousness. You know, those are the high places. All the false churches, 
There's one about three blocks down the road here. You know, they're a friend to the world. The Bible says, whosoever is a friend of the world is the enemy of God. You know, a preacher is not supposed to be somebody's friend. He's supposed to preach the word of God. Be in, in season and out of season. Preach the word. You know, that's all a preacher is supposed to do is preach the word of God. Not be somebody's friend. Uh, you know, dressing like some, uh, you know, high schooler that doesn't want to offend people. I was in a church service one time and the guy got up there and started preaching. He says, I'm not going to wear a suit so I can make everybody else comfortable. I was like, you're not here to make everybody comfortable. You're here to preach the word of God. It has nothing to do with what you're wearing. But if you can go into a McDonald's and the guy who's managing the McDonald's can wear a tie, if I can sit up here and preach the word of God, I can put on a tie. You know, we're supposed to be setting our standards uh, at the high gate of the house of God. Uh, you know, the people who are in charge making the decisions supposed to be uh, at the high gate. Our families. You know, a lot of people don't want to respect the Bible or do the things in the Bible because they're afraid it might turn away their family from them. Jesus says, if you love your father and mother or children uh, more than me, you're not worthy of me. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be that go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way with leadeth, which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. He said, enter into that straight gate. Jotham built that higher gate of the house of God because the standards of God are higher than the rest of the world. If we're the friend of the world, we're the enemy of God. We need to enter into that higher gate. You know, all it takes is to believe on Jesus to get saved. But as Christians, we need to go through that higher gate. We need to let our light shine for the rest of the world. You know, the Bible says that, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are created unto good works, uh, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. You know, we're supposed to be in that higher gate as followers of Jesus. The world may be going to hell, but I'm going with Jesus. You know, that's what happened here. You know, God sent them trouble. Even though they had all those good kings, is because all the people still sacrificed in the high places. They didn't follow Jotham's example. They didn't want to follow his judgments or his uh, 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 his leadership, his example. Jotham, there was nothing bad said about him. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. But all the rest of the people still sacrificed in the high places. If you would, look again in 2 Chronicles chapter 27. In verse number 2 it says, And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Uzziah did. Howbeit he entered not into the temple of the Lord, and the people did yet corruptly. Now, do you have to force people to do the right thing? You know, he led a very good example. He was a great king. And there was great prophets in that time. But the people still did yet corruptly. Do you have to force people to do the right thing? You can't force people to do the right thing. You can't do it. And if you did, it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter if they did the right thing because you forced them. It says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 5, it says, Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling and singleness of your heart as unto Christ. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. You know, you can force somebody to do the right thing, but if it's not coming from their heart, it doesn't matter. Uh, they're not going to get any rewards for that. They're not even getting recognition for that because they're not doing it with their heart. People are making bad decisions 
uh, when they're making good decisions because you have to force them. You can't force somebody to do the right thing. You know, I said earlier that I'm going with Jesus. You know, what does that mean? I'm going with Jesus. If you would, uh, flip over to Ecclesiastes chapter 4. You know, what does that mean, I'm going with Jesus? In Amos chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Can two walk together except they be agreed? Two people cannot walk together unless they agree. Uh, unless you're forcing them to. They cannot walk together unless they agree and work together. Otherwise, there's just strife and contention. In Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, in verse number 9, it says, Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. That's unity. Can two walk together except they be agreed? That's unity. You know, if you have two people and they cannot agree on how to make good decisions, uh, you know, that's just strife. Uh, that's just uh, leads uh, to bad things down the future. Uh, you cannot walk with somebody unless you be in agreement. I'm going with Jesus because I agree with every word of the Bible. That's pretty simple. Life is simple. Just do what's right. You know, that's what Jesus did. He just did what's right. Jesus said, he that is not with me is against me. You know, if we don't fully agree with Jesus then how can we walk with him? How can we say, I'm going with Jesus and not with the world if we don't fully agree with him? In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, it says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. You know, that's what us as Christians, you know, our standard is set at the higher gate. You know, if we're not all in agreement, then there's just strife and contention. We can't come to unity as Christians. And it's not only in the church, but it's out in our lives. You know, how can two walk together except they be agreed? You know, when somebody makes a righteous judgment that might affect the future, you either agree with that or you don't. There's either strife or contention. Uh... And that's just the way it is. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3, it says, Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. You know, there's just one thing to do, and that's the right thing to do. Uh, sometimes we see that... Uh, outcome of our judgment right in front of our face, but sometimes we can see it afar off. And if two don't agree, guess where you're going to end up? Uh, somebody might end up uh, with a good outcome, but the other one won't. Uh, two can't walk together except they be agreed. The Bible says that, you know, every word shall be established by the mouth of two or three witnesses. You know, two people have to agree together uh, to get a good outcome. In 2 Corinthians Chapter 11, verse 3, it says, But I fear, lest by any means, as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. You know, amen. You know, a lot of times we don't know how to make good decisions, but this says it's the simplicity that is in Christ. Just do the right thing. 
Try to imagine what's going to happen in the future on the decisions that you make. And choose your outcome. Cause and effect. You know, how do we know what's right? Life is simple if we do what's right. How do we know what's right? That's from the Bible. You know, the Bible tells us a lot of things. It tells us uh, how to be men, how to be women, how to be fathers, how to be preachers. I think I preached on this last week, but it tells us how to be good Christians. It tells us everything that we need to know, not only in our spiritual life, but in our physical lives, our lives out into the world. Jesus said that, I pray not that you take them out of the world, but that thou keep them from evil. You know, Jesus knows that we're here in the world, and he was praying to God the Father in John chapter 17, that he would just keep us from evil. You know, but evil lurks around every corner. You know, these people in 2 Chronicles chapter 27, uh, they were still, uh, still did yet corruptly. Even though they just had a long line of good kings giving them a good example. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 it says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. You know what he's saying there is he gave gifts unto men. Uh, you know a lot of times we can read the Bible like it says here in Second Chronicles chapter 27 and we can't know what he's talking about Jotham here because it's only nine verses and we flip back to uh, 2 Kings chapter 15 you know what's going on with Jotham it, the Bible tells us to flip back and forth but we can't make heads or tails of it he gave some prophets and teachers you know to let us know what the high standard of God's word is you know the high standard of how Christians ought to live in that higher gate he also gave husbands and fathers did I get, have you guys turned somewhere? I guess not. In Ephesians chapter 5 verse 21 it says, Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ... So let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife... Loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth it, and cherisheth it, even as the Lord, the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife. And they too shall be one flesh. You know, that's pretty simple. You know, the man is supposed to be the leader of the house. And he's supposed to guide his family and teach them in truth and how to serve the Lord and do the right things. Sometimes he doesn't make good decisions, uh, but most of the time he does. And that's not what the Bible's saying there. The Bible is uh, saying, you know, make those decisions. If you don't know how to make them, listen to what God gave you. He gave some po uh, pastors and teachers uh, and evangelists. Listen to what they have to say. If you have a hard time uh, making good judgments good choices, listen to the gifts that God gave to you. Uh, you know, if you're a godly person, you know, God has given you gifts to go by. My ear just unclogged, praise God. Uh, hopefully it'll stay that way for a little while. Uh, probably not, no, there it goes. But, you know, praise God. Uh, you know, God has given us gifts to make right decisions, even when we don't have to. And it's called unity. We are all one in Christ Jesus. You know, somebody uh, 
that I know may make better decisions than me. The Bible says that a wise man will hear and will increase learning and knowledge. Uh, doesn't that go for everybody? You know, if you're wise, which God giveth to all men, James chapter 5, uh, then you will hear if you're having a hard time making uh, good decisions and good judgments, you'll listen to the people that God gave you, uh, like it says in Ephesians, that he gave men gifts, some pastors and teachers. He also gave fathers and husbands and also mothers. Jotham had a good father. He also had a good mother. There's nothing in the Bible that's there accidental. If we look back here in 2 Chronicles chapter 27, in verse number 1 it says, Jotham was 20 and 5 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. I don't know which Zadok that is, but there's a lot of uh, uh, Zadoks that were priests in the Bible. You know, he was probably, uh, you know, teaching his daughter how to live right. But his son Ahaz was bad. You know, God said that he was going to send them trouble. And then, you know, uh, Jotham died and his son took over. And his son was bad. You know, he didn't choose the higher gate of the Lord. All these good kings leading up to Jotham, and right after that it was a bad king. Why is that? If we look down at chapter 28, in my Bible it's the same page, in verse number 1 it says, Ahaz was 20 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem, but he did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord, like David his father. For he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel, and made also molten images for Baalim. Excuse me. Moreover, he burnt incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom, and burnt his children in the fire, after the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. He sacrificed also the burnt incense in the high places, and on the hills, and under every green tree. Wherefore the Lord his God delivered him unto the hand of the king of Syria, and they smote him, and carried away a great multitude of them captives, and brought them to Damascus. And he was also delivered into the hand of the king of Israel, who smote him with a great slaughter. He got smote twice. Uh, you know, that's what happens maybe when you don't have a good mother. You notice here that all these kings, as it says, and his mother was, but King Ahaz, it never mentions his mother. Who was his mother? We'll never know. You know, just because your father does right doesn't mean that you will. In Mark chapter 6, verse 3, it says, Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joses and of Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but is in his own country and among his own kin, and in his own, in his own house. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief, and went round about the villages teaching. You know, that was Jesus saying that, you know, a prophet can have no honor uh, in his own country, in his own, with his own kin, in his own household. You know, uh, just because you have a godly uh, father doesn't mean that you're going to do godly. If you don't uh, make those decisions that are going to lead to a better future, which uh, King Ahaz was completely void of. He had no judgment, no good judgment whatsoever. Uh, you know, God blessed all those kings that went before him, but he got smote twice. And his father and his grandfather and his great-grandfather, they were all good kings. Uh, but sometimes you just get a knucklehead. He says, never, no mention of his mother there. Uh, you know, maybe somebody was feeding him a lot of bad advice. Uh, you know, Jesus said, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house.
You know, sometimes when people grow up in a godly house with a man that has stood up to try to do the right things, they reject it. And they say, you know, well, you're just a Bible thumper. That's all you do is, uh, you know, try to make good decisions and try to live a godly life. You know, we want the easy life. We want to do what's fun and what's right, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with having fun, but sometimes you have to make good decisions that's going to affect the outcome of your future. If you're having a hard time with that, just look through the Bible. In their eyes, he was just a man. Talking about Jesus in Mark chapter 6 there. You know, in his own country, Jesus was just a man. You know, but he was a man that went around teaching good things and healing a few sick folk. You know, it would only take one time for somebody to walk down the street and to make a blind man see for me to realize, hey, that's a man of God. Just like Elisha and Elijah, you know, those uh, good prophets, uh, Paul and Peter, you know, all these with special gifts that were able to heal people. It would only take one time, you know, but they, they just thought he was a regular man. They gave him no honor in his own country. He had to go somewhere else to receive his honor. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you would, look down there at verse number 6. It says, So Jotham became mighty because he prepared his ways before the Lord his God. You know, we need to prepare our ways. That means make decisions that are going to affect our outcome in the future. Not just the here and now. You know, the here and now is fun, but it's not worth our future if it's going to ruin our future. We need to prepare all of our ways, not only in, you know, church with one another. Uh, two cannot walk together unless, except they be agreed, but in our everyday life. You know, if we make bad decisions right now, like stepping in front of a Mack truck, we're going to get squashed. You know, but if we make bad decisions that's going to out, uh, affect our future, we need to take heed to that too. You know, a lot of times people will make decisions based on the future way far ahead. You know, especially when it affects their family. Uh, like it says there in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. You know, and your children. You know, you need to look ahead to the future, not just the here and now. It's the cause and effect. All of our ways need to be in the simplicity of Christ, and that's to do the right thing. Every decision we make leads to either good or bad. Every single decision. Maybe not right now, but it's coming. Back there in 2 Kings chapter 15, verse 37, it says, in those days the Lord began to send against Judah, Reason, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Remaliah. And Jotham slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, his father. And Ahaz, his son, reigned in his stead. In Isaiah chapter 57, verse 1, it says, The righteous perisheth, but no man layeth it to heart, and merciful men are taken away, none considering the righteous is taken away from evil to come. We don't always have the righteous to help us make decisions. Sometimes we need to step up and make those decisions ourselves. Or else, uh, you know, when bad things come, we're going to be in a bad way. It's cause and effect. I'm not sure what I'm going to title this video on YouTube, but I think it's just going to be cause and effect. The choices we make today will affect our future. And we need to make good choices Make good choices now that will make things better in the future. Even though it's hard right now, it'll make things easier in the future. Uh, just like Jotham did here. You know, he set the high gate, but nobody wanted to go in. Uh, they all wanted to go to the high places, you know, which is in the world the easy way. You know, they want to go to the, the church right next to their house or down the street. They don't want to go to the, uh, the high gate of the house of the Lord where they know the truth is. You know, they wanted to go to the, the, the fun center, uh, you know, the place to have fun and place that's easy to go to, the place that has a big coffee bar and snacks, things like that. Uh, fun music. Uh, you know, they don't want to go and hear the truth. They don't want to set their standards high. They want to keep their standards low because it's easy uh, and quick and easy. You know, but we need to go into that higher gate, set our standards high and stick to them. 
because that will affect our future down the road. And uh, God will bless us, keep us from evil in all of our walks of life. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for bringing us together today. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for your word.